Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. Our guest this week on CT Small Business Toolkit is Laura Vanderkam. She is the author of I Know How She Does It, How Successful Women Make the Most of Their Time. She's also the author of What the Most Successful People Do Before Breakfast. So if you're struggling with time management, this week's edition is for you. And Laura, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Now, first of all, let's uh, focus just a, a bit on the fact that this uh, essentially focuses on women, this study that you did. Explain what you did, uh, why you focused on women, and what your goal was here. So I was interested in this idea we have out there that women just can't have it all, that uh, if you have a big, demanding career, you must be making really hard trade-offs on the home front. And yet, as I've studied successful women over the years, I've seen that that's often not the case. They often have more balanced lives uh, than the popular narrative conveys. And yet, much of what we know about women and work and life is based on stories. So I wanted to add some data to that conversation. So I hope that we could make it be a little bit more based in reality. And essentially what you did here was have them fill out a pretty detailed uh, chart of how they spent different increments of time. Uh, Explain what you gleaned from that. So I got 1,001 days in the lives of women who earn at least six figures and also have kids at home. Um, So I could see hour by hour in these 1,001 days what people were doing with their time, when they were working, when they were sleeping, when they were doing housework and errands or reading or exercising and all these things. Um, I could analyze it and and see, you know, what life really looks like for for people with these kind of existences. And do you generally see people with pretty fixed schedules? It seems from this book that there's actually more flexibility depending on the circumstances day to day than a lot of people might realize. It was it was fascinating to see. Um, people had much more reasonable work weeks than we might have imagined. The average woman in my study worked about 44 hours a week, so that's longer than the average person with a full-time job, but it's not that much more. It certainly isn't around the clock. Um, the other good news is that women were, for the most part, getting enough sleep. Um, the average woman in my study slept 54 hours a week, which, if you do the math with seven days in a week, comes out to just a little bit under eight hours per day. So you don't really hear that so much. When you talk about women with with big jobs and families, we assume that they're going to be these harried, sleep-deprived messes, and that just so was not the case. How efficient are they within those working hours, though? That might be one of the keys here. Well, certainly I think many women were quite efficient with their time. They're not everyone. I would see things on time logs that uh, one person actually wrote a horrible, unproductive hour of Internet time warp. Uh, (laughs) That was one of my favorite uh, entries on a time log. But uh, for the most part, they had figured out ways to uh, get their work done and to still invest in the softer side of of work, I mean, in nurturing those professional relationships that are always so important, and yet still get home and see their families, too. Well, the conventional wisdom, as you mentioned just a little bit ago, is that it's very tough for women to uh, be able to spend as much time as they feel like they need to with their families and also spend as much time as they feel like they need to with their high-profile demanding job. What are the women who you studied understanding that perhaps a lot of people aren't? Well, partly it's just that there are 168 hours in a week. Um, So if you work 44 hours, which was the average in my study, and you sleep 54, that leaves 70 hours for other things. So 70 hours a week is actually quite a bit of time. I mean, you can have a full personal and family life in that time. Uh, Now, it does sometimes require being a little bit creative about where you put things. And so I found that women were very strategic with their hours, um, that they didn't hold to assumptions of what must be work time what must be family time. They were often willing to move things around in order to make it all fit. We're talking with Laura Vanderkam. The book is I Know How She Does It. And Laura, much of our audience is uh, entrepreneurs. They own their own businesses. And obviously, if you're the one at the top of the, of the uh, company chart, whenever something happens that's out of the ordinary, it's going to probably end up in your lap. So how do these successful people deal with those unexpected situations? 
Well, one of the most amazing techniques I saw is just to think about what could go wrong. Um, so, if you know, much in life is what we might call known unknowns, uh, that you, you don't know exactly what will go wrong, but you know something will. Uh, and so many things can, can be planned for. You can plan for projects taking longer than they need to. You can plan that probably some employees will be out sick during the winter. I mean, that just happens with flu season. And you can plan for, uh, you know, a customer suddenly demanding some Something different. I mean, these are all situations that you can think about ahead of time and plan ahead so that you can have the space necessary to deal with it. And that way you're not stressed when these things come up because you know to expect the unexpected. So building in some open space in life to absorb what might be a crisis otherwise was a very smart strategy I saw. Is there any great fundamental difference in how men versus women ought to approach this issue? I really don't think there is. I mean, I studied women because we still have this idea that it's women who can't have it all, that they're the ones making hard trade-offs at home. But many men these days want to work differently as well, and they still are operating under the assumption that full-time work is the only way to work. And, and, and so if you look at some studies, men have more work-life conflict than women do um, because of these ideas of, of what it means to, to operate in a traditional male identity. Um, but I find that many of the strategies that women use in order to make all the pieces of their life fit together are entirely available to men as well, and increasingly men are using them. You'll see men leaving work at a reasonable hour, going home, spending time with their family, and then maybe logging back on after the kids go to bed so they can finish up stuff they didn't get to. Laura, if you run into people, and I'm sure you have, who are just exasperated and saying, this sounds great, but this is just not how my day, my week uh, end up unfolding, and I'm completely exhausted, whether it's organizational abilities, uh, something else, uh, the way you kind of budget, maybe move around the time, the flexibility that you mentioned, where would you encourage folks to start so they not only can get to the things that they really want to get to, but not burn themselves out in the process? I would really encourage anyone who wants to use their time better to figure out exactly how you're spending it now. We often have stories we tell ourselves about just how crazy and busy life is, but if you actually keep track of your time uh, for a day or two days, ideally a week, you start to see uh, that there are patterns. You start to see um, things that might be helpful to you, that you know the hour you budget for a certain project isn't enough time. It's never taken less than 90 minutes, so build that in. Be honest about it. That way you know it uh, and, and can plan for it. Uh, you might also start to see space that is available to you. I mean, you may not be able to guarantee what time you'll leave work, but you are in charge of what time you show up. And so you can use your morning hours for things that are important to you. Uh, and, and that's a strategy you could use as well. What about in terms of distractions? It's easy, you know, you hear that email ding or you see there's a little red bubble next to your notifications on Facebook or something like that. How do you maybe discipline yourself to, yeah, I'll get to that, but not every time I see it pop up kind of a thing? Yeah, discipline is great if you have it. Um, I think sometimes we rely a little bit too much on discipline. You kind of want to set up your life in ways where it's less tempting to check email, whether that's uh, by disabling that ding, for starters, uh, but, but also by filling your life first with the things that you are really excited to be doing. If you notice when we're most often distracted at work, it's when we're doing stuff we don't particularly care about. Um, so if you... Fill your workday first with the projects that you are most excited about and spending, you know, that one-on-one -on -one time with direct reports, really nurturing that relationship and thinking about the big picture. I think you'll be amazed how much less time you spend in your inbox just because you're giving it less time. And finally, uh, for those who do run their own business and they're trying to improve productivity and also improve, you know, the, the balance in life of, of everyone who works for their company, uh, how would you encourage them to go about implementing that at their business, whether it's filling out these detailed timesheets or something else? Well, the timesheets are great, but it's also about thinking through your time before you're in it. I mean, time passes whether we think about how we want to spend it or not. So being intentional about the time and hopefully planning out the work week before you actually hit Monday morning will make better use of both your time and your employees' time. Maybe spending a little bit of time every Friday afternoon thinking through what do we hope to accomplish as an organization next week? What is going to be on everyone's priority list for the next week? And that way you'll hit Monday ready to go. Laura, some uh, very nice rays of sunshine for people who might be very stressed about time management and, and trying to get everything done. Thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Laura Vanderkam is the author of I Know How She Does It, How Successful Women Make the Most of Their Time. She's also the author of What the Most Successful People Do Before Breakfast. I'm Greg Columbus reporting for CT Small Business Toolkit. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. 
Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.